Okay, if they worked out through the grapevine, this is the gamma rays that we're getting now from that's basically that's what I call them. The light uh, and basically you've seen the actual fact of it also in the uh, blue background ahead of like uh, I'm not sure of the date, but probably the eighth, ninth, or something like that. Now uh, we got this from the ninth month, twenty third date. Okay. What I'm gonna do is basically play uh, try to get around recording uh, 10 20 I mean uh, 10 13 probably would be the, the freshest footage I get but I get this from 923 from a little birdie in a tree and basically we are getting uh, some wild uh, cross action and we're gonna we're gonna uh, zoom in on this and it's not a planet well it is but it's a uh, basically a planet we don't know about the name and everything so if we're going to scoot up and we're basically going to scoot over just because basically with your eyes you'll see that we get a cme react now when we zoom in i got to keep the deal out of there because it, it didn't it follows frame around now which it didn't used to do but you can see that there's a planet in the darkness back there and you see the dark hole okay and the cme is what lights up space okay and then they, you get that that's where we get the light from for everything to see the stars everything from any light that's out there but the red background is to adjust for but you get that flash and you can see that that small planet there's a planet in that darkness there and you've seen that if this is 923 that this happened okay now what we're going to do is we're going to zoom back out and you will see and basically as we're sitting here you see the basically what we call a gamma ray it's the best explanation for it. Gamma ray coming in from the right and also across. Okay. So electrically, and we've already know from, I'm going to have to bring up what we know on that from the NASA flick. I'll show you that in a second. I'll give you a link for it. It would be the best thing to explain too. So basically, you will get all your truthful data from NASA on that. Okay. Now we're going to go back to like 150. And you'll see that coming across. The gamma ray comes across. And then there's a planet back in that darkness that does a CME reactive flare to it. Okay? Now we got the CME reactive flare down too because the idea that normally it does it from the sun's energy. Now it could be a combination of the sun, some other uh, O sized star, which basically the O size stars are the biggest stars that we know of. And let me give you the actual factual data on this. But basically watch also that when it is also flashing in from this direction also. I got my cursor upside down because basically I can't control it around to point the direction of the other flash. But you see the other flash. So we've got a combination of a CME off the sun to the right and possibly Alaraf and Formal Hot. And then you also know about the information if you watch my videos about Kepler. Okay, so basically, a planet in the darkness back there does a CME reactive flare to uh, gamma rays coming by. Now, this was on the 23rd. Let's go see the footage from the uh, 13th, hopefully. Now basically we'll zoom in on the meatball which you shouldn't be able to miss because it's basically right there and the sun is protected back here and you also see that they did mark it that it's Jupiter above, right above the, the deal, the solar panel. And let's just pop in right at 400 and we should, yep, bang, we're right there and there's the meatball. We shoot left. And basically you have to remember the angles because basically they have it at an angle where the idea of the meatball, and you've seen the sun shots before that we've had, that the, the meatball is way up here. Usually we've seen in the past up on the reds, H12 and stuff like that, the meatball's been up here. So it's taken its path and it's went all the way out to here. Okay. Now this is not, I don't believe the object is too damn huge to be the object that is up by the sun that you keep seeing. Either that or that object is actually huger than what we think. Now Uranus is smaller than even I think or it's about the same size as uh, 
it even, I'm pretty sure it's bigger than, I'm not worried about the size of that right now, but basically Uranus is back here somewhere, it's one of these dots, basically probably that dot that's right on top of the R is probably Uranus, one of these little stars, basically it's not a star, it's a planet, is Uranus, something there is Uranus, more than likely that one right there on the R, okay, and there's Earth, and then we got the meatball right there, can't miss it. So basically, you got to remember, it's kind of basically coming out of an envelope because basically all the years that it's ever moved and did its movement like that, otherwise there'd be stars would be blowing up and we'd have supernovas and so forth and so on. So now pretty much here on the freshest that we have on the 13th, there's a little bit of a uh, CME reactor flare off on a planet and I'm wondering if it's still the one from the dark area. If you watch real close, right up here, there's a flash. If you see by my cursor, you keep watching there, there'll be a flash. See that little flash right there? So possibly a little planet, which it could be bigger than Earth, who knows? But as you see, there's just in this problem of travel through space, the idea that they have to hang lefts and rights here and there because the idea that there's a lot of stuff in the way. Okay, you travel at light speed, but, and you actually, I think I've discovered that you can travel faster than light speed, and basically you see, you can see it right by that, my cursor, there's a, there's a little flash, and I'm hoping the yellow isn't over top of it, move it over this way, so just directly to the right of there, there's a little CME reactive flare from some planet, matter of fact, I'll zoom it up, and you'll see it right there. Right to the right of my cursor. I got it blown up. I think it's just at 400, but you can see the little flare. See me reactive flare of a planet up there. And there's lots of planets, folks. Check all this material out there <laughs> out in space. I mean, those are all planets, stars, planets, all kinds of stuff. It's wild. It's crowded, but there's tons of distance between every one of these objects. So there's lots of alleys. Okay. As you can see from the satellite, because you can see across space like this so far, it's not far, it's amazing, it's massive. And as you see, basically this is the 13th, we'll zoom down to like 100, and we'll pop out and show you what you can check out on some facts of, of what basically probably happened on the 23rd okay, of last month. Now folks, this is the video at NASA that you need to watch, and it pretty much explains, but it's not, it's not positive that that's where this is coming from, okay? But what we have to do is we have to go ahead and not pay attention to the art and watch the actual shot from space, okay? This is September 21st, 2012. And that art, basically, I'll have the link, but don't pay attention to this art, okay? Because this is the art. It's not an actual picture from out of the telescope, okay? Forget the art. Look at what you actually see. Because they just either show the artist what they can see out of there, but that's what they can actually see. Okay, so what we have is two suns that are magnetically hitting each other. Okay, and then they cause a electrical signal, ladies and gentlemen. Don't pay attention to the art. Forget the art. But when you watch the video, just watch the actual footage from the space shuttle. I mean, not the space shuttle, but from the actual Swift uh, satellite Swift. Okay, because it shoots this, and you get basically what we're seeing off Soho, but you're getting it from two suns that are up there. And let me give you the names of them real fast. And basically, there's tons of light that goes, electrical magnification goes flying through space, massive distances. And that's on this video here. Now there's Lucerte A and B, and basically they are two super giant suns, basically two huge suns out there. And basically that's what was giving you the heat today in certain spots in North America where it was burning right through at certain angles down through the cold front that you had. And basically you had 15 to 20 degrees temperature records in cold areas of the Northwest, okay, in certain areas. In some places 80 miles away, 50 miles away, 45 miles away, it was 15 to 20 degrees cooler, okay. Now this is where they sit at currently at the central standard time right hand corner of my screen and there's all your planets in line too okay 
So basically, you remember to watch that video because basically there's certain suns that make radio waves out in space. And check this out on radio waves. Now those huge O stars, basically up way up high. We got the super giant stars below it sitting out there in space. So we're getting this stuff from way out in space. Bright giants, the giants, and then basically the main sequence is where the sun is in, in this line here. Then there's the sub dwarfs below it and the white dwarfs. So huge stuff, and we'll give you the size on that stuff as you scroll down here. And basically, always watch this stuff on big on the full screen so you can see all the data real clear. Remember, the ones in the red are usually the ones the most interesting to go look at because that's what someone's sitting there saying, well, that's not right, and that's not right. Well, just go check and find out where the stuff's at. But there is a lot of the blue ones are basically, and pretty much I pretty much figure everything that's listed here is pretty much a bunch of good examples of O stars. All right, so a lot of good information. Hidden star secrets, pretty much, coming out, folks. Okay, there's way more than one sun. A star is a sun. Okay. Now, great information for wormhole watchers, because basically, check that huge IU yet, that out. 2847 .413. For IU, that's 2,847 distances to the sun. 2,847, 2,847 distances of the sun and a half away was this object. Check it out. Now, when I go back to show you, basically we've had stuff very small, okay, short to us, okay. So we've had every night there's been a, a, a close IU asteroid come by on Asgard. Basically, you're anywhere on Earth. So this object here came by at night on Asgard and basically made it that far away, 2,800 and something AU away, 2,800 and something AU out. So that huge AU out and you can still see it as good as you can see some of the stuff that's at basically a very small AU. Okay, this is the one that was way the hell out there and these other ones are close. Okay, and there's a lot of objects. I'll just spin through them real fast. You need to go to Asgard, and uh, there is your fireball address right there, okay? There's a lot of objects going by, and basically this is the Draconius uh, asteroid fall solstice, so celestial, okay? So lots to check out. Now the data's been like a long, many hours behind, and basically this is sitting at like five hours behind, I believe, data-wise because this is all UTC time. Now, you just are showing like five here right now, but let me show you a picture of what we've had spiking every once in a while, every other hour or every couple hours. In the last 24 hours, every couple hours or so. Excuse me. So basically you'll see the readings here and I'm gonna show you a picture. And basically you see the spiking we're getting. You see up to 15 here. You see over here? Yep. And don't pay attention too much to the gauge here because basically the color will give you a better indice of the idea that we're moving right up to the 15 area, okay? You really can't trust this gauge too much because basically this hits and then this spikes and gives the graph later on. So up to like 15 megahertz, which is 15 kilohertz, basically you can make a radio transmission through that, okay? That's coming through our atmosphere and coming to Earth. Basically it's coming from those other stars, okay? We are getting radio signals from outer space. For basically two cars, uh, two stars basically colliding with the light from massive distances apart, but yes, colliding the radio waves through space, light. Here's a movie of the data of the crazy solar winds that we are getting. This is the Earth's solar winds, okay? This is the weather we're getting from outer space, okay? Crazy winds at Earth, okay? And what's getting through is radio propagation. Here's your solar wind magnetic flux. We're getting it on the south pole too, folks, as you see there. And you'll see a little bit on the north pole. But we're getting more on the ass end right now. And you'll see a little red on the left if there's enough time on the video. A little bit of red to the left.
And here comes a little bit of red to the left, I think. There you go. A little bit. A little bit. 